In this series, we cover the top 10 games, both the hottest and classics, picked by our viewers as the games they couldn't let us overlook this month. So join us for our top 10 viewer votes. Hello, I'm Matthew Jude, joined this episode by my colleague and friend, in that order, Paula Deming. I don't know if I should be insulted by that introduction or complimented. Yes. Well, the first game our viewers are all abuzz about this month is The Witcher Old World, based on the book series and scheduled to be released next year. In this cooperative adventure board game, two to five players travel across a vast map, embarking on masterfully penned quests, encountering and making ambiguous moral choices, fighting monsters, being killed by monsters, and sometimes brawling with other witches to defend their school's honour. Like a valedictorian convention gone horribly awry. Or Quidditch. The game lets players construct their own unique decks of cards and an array of options. Then, by utilising card synergies, players can achieve powerful combos as they use their Witcher School's hallmark abilities to their full potential. Like a valedictorian who's a Witcher, who plays Quidditch. On the side. Quest. Side of quest. Yeah, why not? Quests, battles, and even dice poker allows each player to earn money, obtain new items, and train their skills, all on their way to victory and legendary status. Viewer Edward C. says he voted for The Witcher this month because, quote, I love the books, the TV series, and the video games. Now a board game, yes please. I know what you mean, Edward. All we're missing now is a Witcher Old World breakfast cereal. The Witcher. Old World Cereal. It's for breakfast. And speaking of irrational fears of the unknown, here's Chaz with a word from this episode's first sponsor. This episode is made possible in part by the legendary expansion which confronts players with a dark new threat, Annihilus, who's lord of the negative zone and has declared war on anyone who crosses his path. And this requires heroes and villains alike to band together against the total annihilation that looms. And this results in such team-ups as the Fantastic Four working alongside Galactus, or alongside Doctor Doom, or Baron Zemo, or the, the Fantastic Four have made a lot of enemies is, is really what I'm saying here. But this also means it's time to unite side by side against the incoming wave of destruction. Stand together? or fall apart. Fall in line to stand a chance. Stand in fall to chance apart. Annihilation is an expansion for the legendary base game, which is required to play, and is coming soon to local game stores and UpperDeckStore.com. Follow the link in this video's description for more. If ongoing global circumstances have sparked your interest in solo gaming, then you may want to join our viewers in their next pick, Seven Wonders Duel Solo, a print and play expansion developed by the game's publisher in 2020. To play this solo mode, players select an opposing leader character that they will face off against. Then, each turn, one of the 12 decision cards is selected and its instructions followed. Each decision card indicates the leader's choices in a prioritized list, as well as the possibility of immediately replaying an additional round. This means that to be successful, the solo player will need to adapt to the strategy of their virtual opponents and be ready for a variety of outcomes each turn. Viewer Brian T proclaims Seven Wonders Duel Solo to be a great two-player game with a simple yet surprisingly challenging AI opponent. And Yannick S adds a solo duel. Pourquoi pas? Pour oh boy. Pourquoi pas? Pourquoi? Pourquoi pas? Pourquoi pas? Is that how you say that in French? Who knows? Zombicide the board game has over 2 million units in circulation since its release in 2012, including the copy of the game that my cousin, Randall J. Krill Fitzgerald borrowed and never gave back. But now, freshly harvested from the zombie fields of Missouri, is Zombicide Second Edition. That's right, Zombicide Second Edition featured refined and streamlined rules, including updates to target priority for ranged attacks, interactions with doors and vehicle mechanisms. I mean, if it was 
up to me, I'd put the words enhanced doorway interaction in big bold letters right across the front of the box. And that's not all. A new dark zone feature, a zone that hides zombies from survivors' attacks, has been added as well. The second edition also includes new components, miniatures, and plastic dashboards. If you know viewer John D like I do, then you'll be no surprise to hear that he voted for this game because this was a refresh of the original big Kickstarter kickoff. It feels like a good way to update an older game, it sold me, and it was very enjoyable. That does sound like something John would say. <laughs> good old John. Yeah, I know, right? Mm. <laughs> ah, humorous. To me, the biggest problem with board game expansions is that they require multiple boxes, which take up far too much room in the refrigerator. If only there was an addition of one of my favorite games that packaged all the expansions together in one box. Well, now you can, Paula, introducing Everdell, the complete collection, which will eventually be appearing in stores and supermarkets planet-wide in the year 2022. How does it work? Well, Everdell is a board game. It comes with pieces and wooden... No, 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 the expansion. Oh, Everdell the Complete Collection includes 23 different types of critter meeples, player powers for asymmetrical play, giant critters with saddles to ride on, and an array of component upgrades including wooden twigs, squishy berries, smooth pebbles, shiny resin, glass pearls, and more, including metal point tokens and a wooden version of the Evertree. And all those bits and pieces are put to good use in this version with the inclusion of the base game, plus the expansions Belfair, New Leaf, Spirecrest, Pearlbrook, Mistwood, and more. Which is likely why Edward C. called Everdell probably the best looking game I play, and I'm looking forward to trying the latest expansion. Paula, if you could be any animal from the Everdell universe, which animal would you be? Probably an otter. How about you? I'd be Kevin the Squirrel because he's got a very nice stamp collection. Do you enjoy stamp collecting? No, it's because I like taking things from Kevin. This month's next game invites you to embark on a perilous adventure full of dangerous booby traps and treacherous treasure filled caverns. It's the Goonies Never Say Die, in which one player is the Goon Darks Master controlling fears and foes from the outlaw family the Fratellis to the legendary pirate One-Eyed Willie. Meanwhile, the other players take on the role of the Goonies. Mikey, Mouth, Chunk, Data and Sloth an attempt to overcome cryptic puzzles and deadly challenges with teamwork and strategy. Additionally, the game features nine adventures and eight sculpted miniatures of the various characters. Viewer Tony K says, come on, who doesn't like the Goonies? Well, David Kerr from the Chicago Reader did once complain that the film had too many jump cuts. Oh, jumpy cuts are the worst. Oh, they're an absolute travesty of filmmaking, Paula. Hey, Matthew, we're only four and a half months away from Halloween, which means it's time to start talking about all the spooky games that are available, like the next game picked by our viewers this month, Reign of Witches. I'm pretty sure the game isn't referring to those witches, Paula. But I did research for this. You mean I poisoned all those apples for nothing? Wait, you poisoned apples? Like to give to people? Yes. Reign of Witches is a free promotional game that was shipped to folks who purchased at least two other games during an annual sale by the publisher Hollenspiel. This is a two-player card game taking place during America's quasi-war with France, viewed through the lens of a factional conflict within the Federalist Party. One player assumes the role of President John Adams and the other his rival, Alexander Hamilton. And players must contend with the effects of plague, tax rebellions, slanderous pamphleteers, and events abroad from the Haitian Revolution to the Battle of the Nile, from George Washington to Napoleon Bonaparte, and it aims to capture all the chaos from a pivotal period in American history. 
And among the viewers who selected this title was Andrew S., who pointed out this mini masterpiece, originally distributed as a freebie in Hollenspiel's 2020 holiday sale, will be re-released for all to enjoy later this year. It's about Alexander Hamilton and John Adams battling for political power, just like the musical. Absolutely, Andrew, except there are no songs or rapping. Music to my ears is the sound of Chaz once again joining us to share a word from this episode's other sponsor. This episode was also made possible by Railroad Inc. Challenge from Horrible Guild, the online adaptation of the critically acclaimed roll and write game about building connections. Each round, roll the dice and draw routes to connect the exits around your board to expand your network with railways, highways, and stations, all of which earn you points. But you'll also be penalized for any connections left open, so plan carefully, invest wisely, and always chew with your mouth closed. Railroad Inc. Challenge features asynchronous multiplayer. Play a full game on your own, then post it so players from all over the world can use the same dice and the same goals that you just used to try and beat your score. Online leaderboards track daily, monthly, and all-time champions, and are completely cross-platform. So follow the link in this video's description to find the app on Steam for Windows and Mac OS, Google Play, and the App Store, and then test your skill in the Railroad Inc. Challenge. Next up is the first of two back-to-back -back Marvel card games on the list, the Venom expansion from Legendary, the Marvel deck building game. I'm not saying there's a cardboard conspiracy afoot, but viewer Jason W did mention that this was a set for Board Game Geek's May Solo Legendary League. It's a tough set. Alien goo got everywhere. Alien goo! The puzzle pieces are all coming together. The Venom expansion features five new heroes, two new villain groups, two new masterminds, and four new schemes. The return of fan favorite keywords like excessive violence, as well as some all new game mechanisms and new twists on some old ones, with characters such as Venom, Carnage, and even Poison Thanos. Watch out when a symbiote villain ambushes the city as they might bond with another villain to create a powerful adversary. In addition to Jason, viewer Dorothy B states, I love everything about this game, the artwork, the gameplay, all of it. Staying true to the comics and building a game around it? This is cool. Maybe so, Dorothy, but not quite as cool as that alien goo. Next time, collect a sample for me. I've got a theory that it's not alien goo at all, but it's residue seeping out from the cracks of our hollow earth. What do you think about that? Yeah, I thought so. If you have any mind left after having it blown away by that revelation, wrap it around this. The next game the viewers upvoted this month is Marvel Champions. The card game, another game centering around paper rectangles featuring words and artwork from the Marvel Universe. Coincidence? Yes, it is. It's actually not that surprising given the number of products supporting Marvel intellectual property. It may be more surprising if two of the games in this countdown hadn't been Marvel related at this point. Marvel Champions The Card Game invites players to embody iconic heroes from the Marvel Universe as they battle to stop infamous villains from enacting their devious schemes. Matthew, on the other hand, invites players to his interactive seminar on the evidence of living on a hollow planet. All the signs are there, Paula. Yeah. Marvel Champions The Card Game is a cooperative living card game for one to four players. As a living card game, it's supported with regular releases of new products, including new heroes and scenarios, such as the one that currently has viewers Tyler and Aaron excited, stating that they are starting the galaxy's most wanted campaign soon. And Randall J. Krill Fitzgerald said nothing, because Randall J. Krill Fitzgerald didn't comment on this game, and that's because Randall J. Krill Fitzgerald doesn't exist the whole time. <gasps> A mystery. Believe. Believe in the fantastique. Look, I know what you're thinking. What does the Hollow Earth and spot number two on our list have in common? And the answer to that is practically nothing, but that won't stop me from drawing conclusions. For one, they're both full of roots 
And Root is the 2018 game from Leader Games in which two to four players take on the part of an animal faction to battle for control of the vast wilderness. And Root represents the next step in the development of the asymmetrical gameplay design that Leader Games originated in games like Vast, the Crystal Caverns, in which each player has unique capabilities and different victory conditions, which can be a real challenge. And so it's no surprise when viewer Grain W mentioned, I have the game. But I cannot get my head around all the powers of each of the animals. Hang in there, Graham. Also, while I've got your attention, would you like to attend my one-off online seminar about the Hollow World? And Darren S. adds, Root is always a fun playthrough, and can you really get enough of those cute animals and artwork? Come to think of it, what critter would best represent Canada? Excellent question, Darren. I would have to go with a stalwart moose bravely gazing on the tundra plains alone powerful incredibly canadian drinking a tim hortons coffee double double that's what he likes going on about the moose again power of the moose is yet to be untapped one day they will reign supreme with their mighty hoofs and faces alone against the Wind of change, the moose prevails. And this month's most voted viewer pick is the upcoming Marvel United X-Men edition from Command Games. In Marvel United X-Men, players take the role of iconic Marvel heroes cooperating to stop the master plan of a powerful villain controlled by the game. Each villain unveils their unique master plan with cards that trigger different effects and threats that pose challenges across the locations. Heroes must choose carefully the cards to play from the unique decks that not only offer different actions and superpowers to use, but also combine with the actions of other heroes to do the impossible. Build the storyline, unite their powers, save the day. Viewer Carman Chan proudly backed it and can't wait to see the gorgeous minis, especially the ones with translucent parts. But if they're translucent, how well you see them? Tyler and Aaron went all in on the Kickstarter, saying May of 2022 can't get here soon enough. So excited. I see what you two did there. You must felt excited. And Jason W ponders, do I need more stuff after the original Kickstarter? No. Do I want it anyway? Yes. I know what you mean, Jason. I feel the same way about comfy hats and flannel shirts and books by Thomas Wolfe. Don't get me started on his 1929 masterwork look, Homeward Angel. Yeah, hey, he's one of Jack Kerouac's biggest influences. What's your favorite part? I haven't read it. That's why I asked you not to get me started on it. And with that, I'd like to remind you that you can help pick the games featured in our next episode by following the link in this video's description to join the Watch It Played's Patreon page. And for the personal game picks by the Watch It Played staff, watch this month's On The Radar. Bye y'all. Bye, everyone.